You ready? Good evening, everybody. Um, today is uh, Wednesday, November 18th, 6 o'clock, and we're going to have a meeting on our general budget. So uh, we need to have a Pledge of Allegiance. Stand up to the Pledge of Allegiance and get the meeting started. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to have a, we'd like to honor a moment of silence for our military, firefighters, road workers, and sheriff's deputies as they serve our community here and abroad. Thank you. Okay, so workshop workshop session is ready to begin. Do the floor, I believe you have the floor, Steve. Roll call. Roll call. Oh, shoot, thank you. Yeah, keep me out. Yeah, long day. Okay, roll call, please, Ms. Edwards. Trustee McLaughlin. Present. Trustee McGuire. Present. Trustee Mann. Present. Okay, Trustee so Mann. now let's do the, uh, Steve, you got the floor. Okay, we'll, we'll do tonight in three sections, one for general, one for sheriff, uh, policing, and one for the lighting district, and we'll talk each one individually. But if you take your latest financial report, which uh, Ms. Edwards kindly gave to you last evening, um, and that's to be this one. I gave you a bunch of papers, but it's a UAN report called the Fund Summary. A year ago, we ended the year at 134936 to the positive in the general fund. Um, and then as you see, as the year progressed, we're now at the other end of the column at the end, that's the unencumbered fund of money, which is 149321.90. The column before that has a total of 50,740 which is the, uh, the, the funds that uh, Ms. Edwards and I encumbered uh, that's remaining for different expenses like payroll, taxes that are due between now and the end of the year. Um, that number is, is, is higher than what's going to be totally needed, but it's not a great deal, so I don't count that in. But if so, unless we get some disaster in the next two months, month and a half, you're going to end the year up in revenue from where you were a year ago by some $15,000. And, and if you think about that, what you did all year this year with general fund and other departments and whatnot, you moved your entire operation to a new building and you incurred all those expenses to trans transition to there and you still ended the year or ending the year close to $15,000 credit. So keep that 149-32190 number in your mind, that last column at the top, because that, uh, as, as Ms. Edwards, I think, explained in one of our other budget meetings, but I'll ask you again, uh, Tracy, if that would be the number, or whatever that number is at the end of the year, what, how is that handled again? So if we end up with this amount of money, it's just, once the end of the year comes, it just goes back into the revenue and then goes back out. And we discuss the budget as part of the numbers that go back into the budget. So you include it as kind of like levy money to that fund, in other, or it's a revenue source to that uh, fund, right? It's the number that will be in the first column of this paper. It says It'll start out there. starting fund balance. It would be that number we replace that number. If that would be the two. If that's the number, right. It we, would we, be the starting fund balance on this on this sheet for 2021. Okay. So trustees, you, you'll have that, whatever that figure is in that last column, you will have that to add to what your projected revenue is from your levy. Um, so if you look at this sheet, which has been given to you a couple times by Ms. Edwards and in the meeting, um, your current levy for general <coughs> both of them, um, bring in about $109,000, well, a little bit over that, uh, six, $109,718. Yep. And uh, so if you, if you add that to those two figures, um, that's kind of where you start now. 
This chart is only the levies. We have revenue that comes in besides the levies that helps support the, the, the general fund. Um, and, and Tracy, this is probably, I'm going to ask you, you know, to correct me along the way if I'm wrong, but we have things like the license um, agreement with the cable, cable company. Mm -hmm. So we get a spectrum cable revenue source annually. Well, it comes every quarter, doesn't it, or something like that? Yeah. Um, and that will be found on your, in, in your revenue report for the general fund, which you also have, that shows what the 2020 revenue was. Um, there's no real way to project 221 except go off of 220 uh, for your revenue. Um, so you have to add the revenue in as the third part of, you know, third part of, uh, of your revenue. Now the revenue status report that you have in front of you says revenue status here, like a spreadsheet, mixes in uh, uh, things like local government fund, the LGF, you guys have heard that before. That state shared sales tax money that comes back to you as a, a community based on your road miles. Um, you've got uh, uh, cable franchise fees last year, was, or this year it's projected to be 45000 um, we have, you know, a few permits and licenses that, for instance, John would sell. That's estimated about four thousand. Um, you have special assessments, but this is an interesting thing. The money for special assessments, you know, except for your lighting district, and that's a, you know, that's a, that's a line item to itself. It's money in, money out. So you can't really count on that in your budget because you're supposed to, anything you assess, you're supposed to, you know, be going back toward your expenses that you used on nuisance mowing, or it'd be trash assessments, if I'm right. Is that right, Tracy? Um, first of all, uh, you got, did you give us the sheet? Because I'm not following you. It's the sheet you provided, that you sent in the computer okay. yesterday. Yeah, but you passed it out to everybody. I just want to be able to follow. Oh, you don't have it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I want to be able to follow what you're yeah. talking about. Tracy provided this report to everybody by email. Okay, I just want to be able to follow what you talked about. Oh, okay. Yes, this is, um, yes, that's correct. Um, the trash was a little bit higher last year, so the money came out of it. If you look in that second column, that's, I added a little bit more because we spent a little bit more in the trash. We usually put two hundred thousand, but we took some more out of another fund. We had to transfer because we didn't have enough for the trash this year. Now, what the city, since we're talking about trash, what the mm -hmm. city of Dayton is doing is it doing an audit on the accounts, and anybody that is a vacant home that we keep filling and filling and filling, they're pulling the trash can, and anybody that uh, I believe it's ninety days in without a payment, they're pulling, they're they're sending threatening letters out to end their service. So your your customer pool has shrunk. That's why, like Tracy said, our our, our billable price to us were projected to be slightly lower than a year ago, because they're not picking up as many trash customers. So um, while I'm on that, you will not see your pay as you throw program in 2021. So you're not going to see any expense there. COVID has pushed back all programs with the trash district at least a year and a half. So you've heard me talk to you guys and you guys voted to try to enter that program. Well, that program's not happening next year. So we're staying in the same trash program that we've got now. So what's, your, what's the line item of trash? Where is it? Talk about on the on the revenue. The bun, the the revenue. Revenue. Well, this would be your revenue status. So yes. if you're looking at special assessments under oh, 1,601. Okay. okay, gotcha. That's what I thought it was. So sure. Yeah, it just doesn't list it as trash. Okay. Um, <coughs> um, so, so from that aspect, that just gives you a little bit of an idea of what you have. Um, and, and, it's, and, and, and the general fund obviously is the lowest, the smallest. Uh, you're running off two levies. Uh, one is a .9 because it used to be a 1.0 because the decline in your property values over the years, that total aggregate is down to 0.9. Mm -hmm. And then your second one uh, was a 0.1 or 0.75, and it shrunk to 0.62. So your, your collections are going down. 
So you, you've got to be concerned about that general fund, which we all have. Everybody's been concerned about that. So what do we, you know, what do we do to try to bring other revenue in that might help us in the general fund? <laughs> so, so that's kind of a, a, a quick history. So if you uh, if you if you pull out your um, the uh, this one that you see my handwriting on. What I did is I took two twenties appropriations, and I wanted you to see manually where I took changes, either up or down. And I'm going to discuss them, each one of these changes that are proposed and why. Stop me along the way for any questions you have. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this budget below a year ago. And, 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 it, and it's making cuts. But, but here's the things before we get into looking at those specific things. We've been told by legal counsel, but they understand you have financial constraints, and John Callaghan came to me yesterday. The zoning code is out of date. When it was redone by the previous administrator and, and the zoning officer back before my time, they took the Butler Township zoning code and just did a word change to the entire code and merged it into your code. Hence why on the front page of the picture, yeah. The picture is the yeah. cemetery up there on North Dixie. Yeah. What you're finding is their township is developing or develop portion of it, high income houses, many plats. When the code is written like that, it's not written to help or, or address issues in the rural area. Because Butler has very little rural other than out west toward Union, Ohio. So John is asking, can we somehow work on rewriting this next year? And you have many options to look into. One is hiring a firm to do it, so professionally you get a code that is written by people that understand township code. You can have John and maybe some consultants man, uh, hired to, and John manage them to get the project done. Um, or the other option is to hire someone that has planning and, and zoning experience and, and have them exclusively work on your rewrite. Either option, all options cost you money. So that when we go through the budget, I put money in there for that, but we can extract it out. So you can see what the actual budget is with it or without it. <coughs> but many times John has struggled uh, when someone's come in and they've asked a question and we don't even have it in the book. So in that case, it falls whatever the Ohio Revised Code says. And then there's a challenge by the client. Because they say, well, it's at the state level. I'm going to get an attorney. I'm going to take on the township. The reason why you have your own local code is try to prevent a lot of those scrapes and, and whatnot. And your residents that sit on your boards have a clear book to operate off of. I remember Edgar telling me before he passed that the frustrating thing for him being, especially at his age, he said, something to effect of the book is not conducive to what you have in Jefferson. Now, when you talk about what Tony did for you guys last year, over the 2020, he wrote or got you to adopt, you know, kind of a Harrison Township type code enforcement. But now, communities are mixing the two books together into one. Even though they'd be second, separate sections, you'd have one book. So that's one thing to write down on your paper as something to consider as we try to get this budget set. Um, and, and second one is uh, our parks. We have holes in the roof of both parks, shelters, houses. Big holes, bigger than me jumping through it. That's just the beginning of some maintenance that we need in the parks. And we don't have a fund set aside or you know, general fund money dedicated to the parks. We, have it, we didn't have it last year. The only thing we have dedicated is the electric for the spotlights or the lights in the park. So I'd like you to kind of think that along that lines about, you know, we're going to have to put some capital improvement into the park somewhere. Um, the third thing is, um, you guys, the minutes, as you've been talking, you know, we've got to make sure we properly fund the, the creation of the minutes. The, the minutes are split and should be split amongst all departments because you're reporting in the minutes all the activity of all the departments. 
So when we look at those other two budgets we've already had meetings on, we've got to make sure that money is in those budgets to help with your your um, record retention or record creation, um, because all departments are you know are are part of your your minutes. So that's the third thing you have to think about as you go through in this budget. I want you to know, all of you to know, that this budget is changeable. What I've done here, and I'm going to go through why I did what I did. I didn't make some fancy spreadsheet up on purpose because I wanted you to see in handwriting of where I made my changes. I'm not perfect at this. I'm trying my best to save us money so we're not running into any troubles with general fund. But we've done a good job, and Tracy's been a lot of help over the last three, four years. We have, we, we are, we've leveled off the loss of the general fund. We have not gone negative in any of the accounts in the general fund. And when you have a combined amount of the general fund, as, as we mentioned before, of possibly around $150,000 at the end of the year, that's much better than when I first got here five years ago, four and a half years ago. I think we ended at 69 or something that range. So we've almost doubled that amount. But we also have done a lot of stuff. So you gotta realize you gotta spend public money to give them what they need, but you gotta also realize you gotta hold some back. That brings up the fourth item, if you were writing a note down. The fourth item is, I've asked you guys during fire budgets and road. General and road have never held money back. There was a short time you had money in the road when you had your um, you sold your back truck, but fire is the only one with money in it. So if you decide as trustees, I asked you those last meetings, if you decide at the end of any year, unless you're in negative or you're in bankruptcy, if you say 5% goes into an investment or a, a, a capital improvement account or something or 10 or whatever, then at the end of the year, Tracy knows that immediately 10% of whatever the net, the net budget final is will go the next year into the capital improvement fund. Even it, 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 I tell people all the time, it, it's silly to say put a dollar away, but your public is wanting to know why haven't you held money back to be able to build a new road building, or in this case, fix my parts. And you can't say anything because the money's all in the general fund together. Still there, but it's not stipulated. So that's the that's the fourth thing I need you to think about tonight: is what percentage do you want to put away, so this budget can account for that going into 21. Um, so um, it's a it's a very good thing to have what you call a retention or investment policy, uh, not to not to start Ohio that Tracy was mentioning about before. That's an investment where you take some of your earned money, your two million in the bank right now, and put some of it into a bank account until you need it. That's an investment account. This here is a capital improvement. So I don't want to belabor things. So if you, um, I've got some of the same questions I asked you in a road on the agenda uh, to talk about, but we've already talked about the remaining amount that we think we're going to end the year. Um, allocation of salaries, you guys are still discussing that, that, that uh, <clears throat> structure and that's, I gave you another copy tonight of that. This budget is based on, and it has a little bit of give, it has a little extra, but it's based on that chart. Um, do you want to make any purchases in the general fund department this year? Item number five, if you write yourself a note. You've talked over and over again that you want to start holding your meetings at Calumet someday when you physically can, and you don't have a you know a meeting room built. Do you want to put some money aside for that? So I'm going to show you where I did put money aside, but it can be struck out and taken out of there. But to get you you at a meeting room, so when that day comes that you can go back into that room um, if you go Zoom. Um, at least you've got your meeting room done and you're not coming to this building anymore. And that's, so I just wanted to answer some of the residents were asking why aren't we meeting over there. Um, we talked about over there if we use the gymnasium we got to clean it before the meeting. The county is required before and after to disinfect the entire building including the restrooms and the hallway leading to the gym. That's every single meeting. 
Um, whereas if you have a small meeting room, they're already going to be cleaning it as part of your CARES Act cleaning program. So you don't really have a cost there um, because it's going to be treated like an office. So you save your, a little bit of money by having most of your meetings in that small room. Um, the next question I have is, uh, you know, do we have any debt service? Well, last year, the first four months, you were paying toward the building here. And then when you moved to Calumet, the fire chief uh, agreed to take over the payments because he wanted the whole building. Is that right, Tracy? No, that's not he right. He paid all last year. It was the year before you think it. He paid all last year. The payments are due in June and December, so he paid all last year. Okay. Well, we don't have that in this budget this time, so thanks for that clarity. Yeah, but you have the Calumet Center. Right. And we'll get to that, too. Um, um, we had to do a transfer here. It was for road, but I, I wanted to make sure that, Tracy, you, you look at these numbers, because I, I know you helped put this spreadsheet together, or this report they have. Make sure we've got enough funding in PERS, workers' comp. Uh, anything in those categories because we don't want to run short next year on those categories um, so when we get to those line items i'll ask you um, i mentioned uh, the, the retention what do you guys want to retain you know keep for the capital um, now this is something that we started last year when chief Lutz was here is we actually brought to you a, a split cost allocation sheet and we had some good meetings mr mann was in them Tracy, myself, the chief. Uh, this is a actual breakdown of what we split on expenses that are shared. And so it's determined at the first of the year, and unless some reason it has to change because of operation changes, you trustees vote on it as part of the budget. And then all the budgets that you vote on, the, the road, the, the general, and all the budgets will reflect those splits. It takes a lot of headache away. It takes memory loss away because sometimes we don't remember exactly what was supposed to be split out of what. And if we do blanket certificates, um, Tracy could actually start paying normal bills, not all of them, just a few automatically because the splits are already predetermined by the trustees and then the department heads already know. So if you have the same company bill coming in every month, the split's already there. We split things like the mail, the, the post office mail uh, machine for certified letters. That's all three departments agree to do that. The uh, computer system, the base operation of it, not changes or improvements or whatever, just the basic operation checking. All those services are split three ways. Or, uh, if there's any cost with the telephone system as a whole, it's split three ways. And gosh, how, how many things were on that list? A lot. The whole yeah, I just didn't make one for everybody because I knew it would change or it was going to change. Well, the base, the base numbers might change, but I don't think like when you're talking, and we have, of course, we have all those. Um, Buckeye, O'Reilly, they all have the Oasis, the website. Um, the Millennium printers, I think that that's. Split the one over in, there's one here and then there's one over in Cali. Yeah, there's only a two persons, two departments yeah. split over there. Um, they may, see, we changed a lot those Time Warner cables. I'm still trying to figure out what goes where because I'm seeing all these different bills. I'm thinking the fire department may need to get rid of one of their bills that get paying for two months. But as far as the Cali Center, I can't figure out what's going on with those bills. I'm still trying to figure out. And I think that might be some of the reason why you had them do a letter so that we'd be able to talk to somebody. Yeah. Your name wasn't on the account. That's why I wanted you on there to start with. You're the primary contact. They were, they were able to talk to me, though. That's good. Um, but, I, but with this, I just don't, didn't know. I wasn't involved, and maybe, and maybe I didn't need to. But I wasn't involved, so I didn't know how many of council. So now I have to accumulate that because right now we have nine. Nine DP and L accounts, I know that for sure. But I'm not sure how many Time Warner bit cable or Spectrum because they either can be Time Warner or Spectrum. So I'm trying to get them all in the one so I can understand. 
but they won't bill them all at the same yeah, time. Yeah, we they asked them to do that. Trustees, uh, Tracy and I both called them and said, can't get a list built, we'll list bill or whatever, we'll do it. D DPNL won't do it either? Nope. So we have a bill for both parks individually, uh, all the buildings individually. So, and some other things she hasn't mentioned on that list, or I didn't mention either, um, our pay court cost. So we base that, I think we base that on payroll. We base it on the 2019 gross wages for last year, so we'll base it on the 2020 gross wage. So in, in about, was it June or July you hired the road department? So it kind of, it's going to change. It's going to change. Next we just, uh, to accurately bill it before, I think we were just taking guesses. Now, if you start the first year with this salary for your departments, that's what you're going to pay all year long because people are going up and down, especially fire departments got people going in and out the door. It's nearly impossible to change that every month or every week or every. So we all said, let's just, remember that meeting, Roy? We just said, let's just settle on a number and then Tracy can easily split it going forward. I think workers' comps handled that way. Work, pay work, comp, um, workers' comp, bill, bill workers' comp, and pay for yeah. So when we come back to have you vote on the, the, the whole thing, you'll have that distribution list. But the budget that I bring forward tonight um, includes what I think is the projected amount. We're not talking about the road with it, the staffing changes. This is strictly general. So um, another item on the list. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, another uh, thing is, um, um, I, Tracy, I would like to know if you could split full-time and part-time wages separate? The question, I saw that on here. Do we have part-time uh, in the general fund? Yeah. Who, who we have part Trustees. Time? Well, that's what you consider part-time. Right. Okay. So the trustees are separate. They are separate. Trustees well, have we don't time. have to change that. I just want to make sure that we have, like, uh, we have uh, Tony part-time. So he's a code, we got on the code enforcement line. Which is okay if you want. Okay. We can keep it that way. I just want to make sure that we differentiate the two. Yeah, you know, the trustees are all, all three of them. They're not three separate. They're just one line trustees. Did you okay. want each one of them separate? No. Okay. That's and then, of course, I'm separate. You're separate. Adrian's separate. Tony's separate. Yeah, John's a contractor. Right. Person. He's under contract for services. Okay. Well, then we'll, we'll, we'll leave that alone. Um, uh, I made sure that this budget covers an increase in insurance and bonding uh, in the middle of 2021. So I, I, uh, I, I have increased that amount. Uh, I asked you about any park projects or the, the rewrite of the zoning code. Um, I do ask you uh, to continue to work on or try to get, you know, at least a, a credit card of some type that, that we can use to buy toilet paper or something in the in the in the in the uh, Calumet Center. We have no way of, of buying those those things without a credit card. Um, uh, one of the things I ran up to today um, is we're ready to ship that copier back to Comdoc and they require an insured shipper. They've got three that they prefer to use. You'd have to call them and get a quote. The lowest one is three hundred and fifty dollars. But they want a credit card to get that thing shipped out of here. I don't have a credit card. Or I don't have anybody to go to to pay that 350 so they won't let me start. We can use the fire department. He's just holding it. He's not using it. Well, that's being an expense on fire. And I'm trying to no, keep it in the still, general. He can still bill it to you guys. I mean, as far as coming out of the code, just because he uses credit card and it says, as long as I know that it's a, a general fund bill, but it's not because you split them. You split them. Through, you split that the last time. You oh, split that, so them. he could do that. I wasn't thinking that way. I was thinking you couldn't use fire money to do a. What it's not really. It's just sense. a credit card. Until I put it in the system, it's not charged to anybody. Okay, uh, trustees, can I go to the fire department and ask them to use their credit card to get this thing shipped out of here? I know you're not supposed to make decisions. This is a work session, but I, I need. I want to get it out of here. Well, by virtue, you have the authority to make that spending decision, so. Okay, all right. So, uh, on the number letter C then, um, you know, again, I, I said before, this is a starting point. 
So we've got from now until we actually put the final budgets together, because fire is changing theirs. I've got road to change after our discussions the other night <clears throat> to come back to you with a you know what we call a a final draft. Um, so please, after we leave here tonight, you sit at home and go through some of this stuff. You see something you don't want, don't be afraid to call us or email and say, this doesn't seem right, or I wouldn't, I'm not supporting this, or whatever. <coughs> but again, my whole thing is to try to stay under last year's budget, unless you can justify going above that budget for things like the special projects. Um, but I don't, in, in this COVID time, even though we don't live on sales tax or hotel motel tax, we, we're going to see a hit. Everybody's going to see a hit. Because somewhere down the line, someone's not going to pay their bills because of the COVID or, or being out of work. And so we're going to see something. And the state's going to come back and give us less money through the LGF as well. Because they're going to say we gave the CARES Act money. So, um, and then, then I talk about what a work session is. So let's go through this um, and stop me along the way. Um, I, I uh, lowered the uh, trustee salaries from 16 to 14 based on that chart. Um, if, if you don't do that chart, you do some other chart, those numbers have to change. Um, the fiscal officer, I left the same. I did not make a change. Um, I want to remove the next one, Tracy, and, and we will, you just see the name removed. You'll have to just tell me after tonight. I don't need to know tonight. Can you remove it or can't you? This one's been on there for a long time. I'm, I'm thinking you can, but I left it on there because I didn't know if somebody might decide I needed some help. Oh, I understand. <laughs> and if we do, or if they do, then we can add that back in. But I won't go well, through the re I won't go through the removes. Well, I want you to I want you to know that that means they would have to vote on the whole thing. So they should probably do it now. And it's a whole hard process when you got to do. Added in on the year. So you recommend leaving it there? No, no. I'm just saying, if you take it out, then they won't have it for the year. They won't have that option. Unless they fine. created the new position for. And, well, but then it won't be for this year because you can't put it on. It can't. You'd have to use a line that's already existed in the budget. Because once you okay. vote for it in the year, it's a hard process to make changes to the budget. That makes sense. After April first, so you still can do it up to April. I mean March thirty first. Okay. Then when we get the permanent budget in, so if you want to change, if you got changes between now and and March thirty first, then you're okay. After that, it's permanent. It's hard to change the permanent budget. Temporary budgets are easy, to, and that's why I've always said over the years, don't try to rush to get a permanent budget because there could be a lot of changes and it takes a lot of complications. Not on you guys, it's part on my part to do what I have to do to get a change. I mean, they'll have to do some voting and approving, uh, but it's a lot of work. And I'd rather, I'd rather not see that happen. We get, uh, uh, by April 1st, we